Welcome to the third lecture on the category of vector spaces titled Linear Maps. Let's review our previous lectures. A vector space V plus dot over a field K is a set V endowed with two binary operations. An addition plus, such that V plus is an abelian group whose neutral element is denoted by zero, and a scalar multiplication dot from k times v to v, which is left distributive with respect to the addition plus. And these two operations have additional compatibility properties with the operation on the field k. Examples of vector spaces include the singleton 0, any field over itself, spaces of functions from any non-empty set to a vector space, and arbitrary products of vector spaces. We now wish to define the appropriate notion of morphism between vector spaces over a given field K. A linear map phi from V to W between two vector spaces V and W over the same field K is a function from V to W such that for all X and Y vectors in V, phi of X plus Y equals phi of X plus phi of Y, and for all scalar lambda, and for all vector x in v, phi of lambda times x equals to lambda times phi of x. The first property here means that phi is in particular a group morphism from the additive group of v to the additive group, additive group of w. There are some very, very simple examples of linear maps. The identity map of a vector space is always linear. Similarly, on a vector space, the function that maps any vector to the zero vector is also trivially linear. Let us prove a simple but important property of linear maps. If phi is a linear map from V to W, then it must map the zero vector to the zero vector. Since, in fact, phi is a group morphism, the additive group of V to the additive group of W, it is in fact true that it must map the neutral element of V to the neutral element of W. But I am going to present here a proof that relies on the vector space structure to vary the pleasures a bit. We showed that in a vector space, 0 times any vector is always a 0 vector. So in particular, 0 times a 0 vector is a 0 vector. Applying phi to this observation, we get that phi of 0 is equal to phi of 0 times 0. But by the second bullet point in the definition of a linear map, this in turn equals to 0 times phi of 0. And again, since w is a vector space, 0 times any vector is a 0 vector. This concludes this little proof. Let's characterize linear maps. This characterization is really the tool we use most often when working with linear maps. A map phi from V to W between two vector spaces V and W over a field K is linear if and only if, for all scalar lambda and for all pair of vector X and Y in V, phi of lambda X plus Y equals lambda phi of X plus phi of Y. First, let us assume phi is linear and prove the highlighted property in the theorem. Let lambda be a scalar and x and y be two vectors in V. Phi of lambda x plus y is equal to phi of lambda x plus phi of y since as phi is linear, it is additive. Now, again because phi is linear, phi of lambda x is equal to lambda times phi of x you can see that we have thus proven that any linear map must satisfy the highlighted property. Conversely, let now assume that phi is a map from V to W which has the highlighted property, that is for all scalar lambda and for all pair of vector x and y in V, phi of lambda x plus y equals lambda phi of x plus phi of y. I wish to prove that such a phi must be linear. First, I'm going to prove that it is additive. 
Let x and y be two vectors in V. Since V is a vector space, we have the properties that 1 times x equals x. Hence, x plus y equals 1 times x plus y. Applying phi to this identity, we get that phi of x plus y equals phi of 1, di 1 times x plus y. But using the highlighted properties that phi possesses, this is equal to 1 times phi of x plus phi of y. And again, 1 times phi of x is simply phi of x. So we have shown that phi must be additive. In order to prove the second property about linearity, I need to first calculate phi of 0. Now, phi of 0 plus 0 is of course equal to phi of 0, since 0 is neutral for addition in W. And I'm going to rewrite 0 in an interesting way. I'm going to write that 0 is equal to 1 times 0 plus 0. Well, this is certainly true for any vector space, so we have that phi of 0 equals phi of 1 times 0 plus 0, but using the highlighted property, this in turn equals to 1 times phi of 0 plus phi of 0. Again, 1 times phi of 0 is simply phi of 0. And since W as a vector space is in particular a group for the addition, we can conclude, again, as we have seen many times, that phi of 0 must indeed equal 0. With this in mind, let lambda be a scalar and x a vector in V. Since lambda x is equal to lambda x plus a zero vector, as zero is neutral in V, we conclude that phi of lambda x is equal to phi of lambda x plus zero. We then can apply again the highlighted property that phi possesses and conclude that phi of lambda x equals to lambda phi of x plus phi of zero but we just shown that phi of 0 is indeed the 0 vector. As again the 0 vector in W is neutral for the addition, we conclude that phi of lambda x equals lambda phi of x. We already proved that phi was additive, so together these two properties mean that phi is linear. Let's now look at other basic examples of linear map using our characterization. The first basic example consists in looking at linear maps from a field to itself. Remember that a field is a vector space over itself. Fix alpha, some element of a field k, and define the function f that simply multiplies any z in k by alpha. Such a map is linear, since if we take any scalar lambda and two vectors x and y, which really in this case means if we take lambda x and y in k, and we calculate f of lambda x plus y, we get alpha times lambda x plus y, which owing to the properties of a field is equal to lambda times alpha x plus alpha y. And you recognize that this is lambda f of x plus f of y. So by our characterization, f is linear. In fact, it is an exercise I'll let you do to prove that if you have a map from a field to itself, which is linear, when we regard the field as a vector field of a vector space over itself, then such a map must in fact be of the type in the example above. There must be an alpha in k, so that f of z is alpha z for any z in k. Here's a hint. Simply note that alpha must be f of 1. So linear maps from a field to itself are not extraordinarily interesting, but things become much, much more interesting when you go to more complicated vector spaces. So here is an example. We're going to fix a real number t, and we're going to define for any function f from r to r a new function from r to r called pi of f, which to any x real number maps the value of f of x minus t. So we translate f by t. Well, this map pi is actually linear from the set of functions from r to r to itself. Remember, the set of functions from r to r is itself a vector space over r. Well, the proof is more or less straightforward. It's, it's pushing symbols around. We're going to use our characterization once more. So we take two functions from r to r, f and g. 
and we take a scalar, that is in this case a real number, lambda. And we calculate what pi of lambda f plus g is. Well, it is a function that to every x in R maps to lambda of f at x minus t plus g at x minus t, which we immediately recognize equals lambda pi of f to plus, sorry, pi of g. So suddenly, this is a linear map. Another example of linear map based on the sort of vector spaces we encountered in the previous lecture are evaluation maps. So we pick a set D that is not empty and some vector space over a field K. Let's call that vector space V. For any X in the set D, I define the following map pi sub X. It takes a function from D to V and it associates to it F of X which is a vector in V. I claim this is a linear map. This linear map goes from the vector space of functions from D to V to the vector space V. The proof uses our characterization of linearity. Let F and G be two functions from D to V and lambda a scalar. If we calculate pi of X at lambda F plus G, by definition, this is lambda of F of X plus G of X, which is an element of V. And simply reading it, you realize this is lambda of pi of x of f plus pi of x at g. This really just follows from the definition of the operations on the space of functions from d to v. But it is an interesting linear map nonetheless. I now will give you two inline exercises. I would like you to prove that two maps are linear. I'm going to uh, pause for just a second. I suggest you pause the video and try those exercises for yourself. And then I will give you the solution on the next slide. So let's look at this first map, which goes from the vector space V uh, times W, where both V and W are vector spaces of the same field K. So we have a map that takes a ordered paired VW and maps to it simply three times the first component V. If I want to prove this is linear, I need to give myself two vectors in V times W. So here you go. I call one of them V1, W1, and the other one I call it V2, W2. And I need to give myself a scalar, lambda. Then I calculate T of lambda times the first vector plus the second vector. To perform this calculation, the first thing you do is actually calculate lambda times the first vector plus the second vector. You calculate the argument of T. We use the definition of what the operations on the Cartesian product of two vector spaces are. And this is what we get. We then apply what t is. t takes the second component of this expression, of this argument, and multiplies it by 3. Actually, I apologize, it takes the first component of this expression and multiplies it by 3. Then we try to recognize somehow t of v1, v2, and t of w1, w2, because that is what the characterization of linearity asks us to find. What I'm doing here is I'm sort of factoring lambda, quote-unquote, and, you know, have some leftover where there's no lambda. Rewriting my expression this way, you can see that I recognize lambda times t of v1, v2, plus t of w1, w2. Therefore, by the characterization of linear maps, t is indeed a linear map from v times w to v. Let's do that again. Now we have a single vector space V, and we have a map that goes from V cross V to V cross V, and to any vector V comma W, where V uh, associate the vector 3V comma V plus W. I want to prove this is linear, and we follow the same pattern. So I won't read the computation, I will just tell you the steps. You pick two arbitrary vectors in V times V, and you take an arbitrary scalar, lambda. 
Then you calculate t of lambda times the first vector plus the second vector. To do so, you first evaluate what the argument of t must be. You then actually apply t. You then rearrange your terms so that t of v1, v2 and t of w1, w2 appear. And thus you are able to prove that t satisfies the characterization of being a linear map. So these are two examples of linear maps. It shows that there are quite a few linear maps as soon as you leave the realm of just a field over itself. It also tells you a little bit how to use a characterization of linearity to prove a map is linear. We are going to conclude our discussion on linear maps today by proving that the composition of two linear maps is again a linear map. We have seen that the identity map of a vector space is always linear. The other key properties that morphism must possess is that they can be composed. If they can be composed, then we indeed are working within what we call a category. So the objects would be the vector spaces and the morphisms would be the linear maps. So here is our theorem. Let's V, W and Z be three vector spaces over the same field K. Let phi be a linear map from V to W, and psi a linear map from W to Z. Then we can compose them, and phi composed with phi, which goes from V to Z, is actually linear as well. Let's prove this result using the characterization of linearity. Let x and y be two vector and V, and lambda be a scalar. I want to compute psi composed with phi applied to lambda x plus y. Well, first of all, phi is linear. So phi of lambda x plus y indeed equals to lambda phi of x plus phi of y. So we get this identity here where phi composed, psi composed with phi of lambda x plus y equals psi of lambda phi of x plus phi of y. I use the linearity of phi. Now I can use the linearity of psi because I'm applying psi to lambda times some vector plus another vector. So we know how to calculate that for linear maps and we get indeed that this is lambda times psi of phi of x plus psi of phi of y, which I can rewrite by definition as lambda times the composition of psi with psi at x plus the composition of psi with psi with phi at y. This is exactly the characterization of linearity. I have thus proven that the composition of linear map are indeed linear. This is an important fact, and I want to point out a little observation that will become extremely important in a few lectures. If actually all my vector spaces V, W, and Z are all the same, all equal to say V, then suddenly there is an operation between linear maps from V to V. Because when you compose two maps from V to V, you still get a map from V to V. So you get a composition between linear maps that keep being linear maps from V to V. We will prove later that in fact this structure is going to be an algebra. We will define this term and show that it is a nice algebraic structure. We will also prove in the next lecture that if you look at the set of all linear maps from a vector space V to a sp vector space W, both vector spaces over the same field K, then this set, which by the way is usually denoted HOM from V to W, HOM is for homomorphisms, this set is itself a vector space. Now we will prove this, we could prove it now by going back to the definition of a vector space, but we'll have a more convenient tool in our next lecture. Namely, our next lecture will introduce the notion of subspaces. This is a very important notion. It has many consequences regarding linear maps as well. So this is an important lecture, and I invite you to uh, listen to that lecture next.